Well, we've collected a pretty good assortment of parts here to do the transformation of the rear end suspension on this bus. We've narrowed the rear end on both sides, converted to a Beetle IRS rear end, and we're putting 944 brake parts on the back here. So let's see if this is gonna fit. Here's my new torsion bar. I've got a pair of these. They're in good order. We're gonna grease the end of them with some fluid film. Yeah, you know what, I'm not going to hit that end just yet. I'll put this in here. Make sure that's in all the way. Got to go find my mallet. I didn't bring it with me. Just get it to bottom out. All right. Got a rubber gogi. One rubber gogi goes right in here. Let this sucker down. Here's my custom spring plate. This is what I've been working on in all of my off time this past week. It should slide right in here, just like this. Now, looking at that, that's a little too steep of an angle. The only reason why I know that is because I took this thing apart. I didn't measure it, but I can tell just by looking at it that that's not right. Now that actually looks right. Okay, I'm gonna put a uh, angle gauge on this here and uh, write that number down because we're gonna match that on the other side. I'm not worrying about lowering this thing today. We're just gonna try to get it the same height on both sides. All right, you guys write this down for me because I'm not going to. <laughs> put that right on here. And our measurement is uh, nine degrees. Now, I think I'm gonna have to put either a jack under here or try to compress it with my chicken foot. You might be saying, what's chicken foot? Let me show you. This is a chicken foot, at least that's what I call it anyway. <laughs> the name kind of stuck in the uh, local club and that's what we've been calling it. But what this is for is for compressing a spring plate. So what we're gonna try to do, and I don't know if it's gonna work on bus. I've never tried using it on a bus before. Yeah, it looks like it might. Well, I'll be damned. I lifted it up and just started to whack it with the mallet and it actually started to go in. So that was enough pressure to do what I needed it to do. That might be slightly lowered from where it's at. Looking at my spring plate here, you can actually see that I've offset it a little bit. Rather than uh, centering these holes in the center of the spring plate, I've actually put them towards the top. Based on my calculation, I should lower the rear about an inch or so. We gotta put the spring plate on the opposite side of that trailing arm. And I think probably the best way to do is gonna be to stick on this cover. I made this cover too, by the way. Huh, I'm gonna slide on. Let's lubricate it. Damn, it's hot out here. It's actually the coolest it has been in months. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon right now and it's 75 degrees, which is remarkably low considering, but the humidity is up around 100% and I'm starting to feel the rain sprinkle on the back of my neck. We'll see how much of this I can get done before the weather takes me out. We're just gonna snug this stuff up. We're not gonna torque anything today. This is just a big trial fit and see if all of my work that I've put into everything, offsetting these spring plates, paid off. Okay, now again, this spring plate has to get on the back side of this trailing arm and it's probably easier said than done because it looks like, yeah, they about butt into each other here. <laughs> I have to shoehorn those into place. Let's see, what's gonna be the best way to do it? Probably put a screwdriver right in here and gently pry. I've done this before, I've been successful before. I've just never done it on camera. <laughs> I wonder how much you guys can actually see in there anyway. Because this uh, camera's kinda looking into the abyss. 
dark under here. I want to grab the axle, but it's greasy. So let me put something over that. Here we go. Grab the axle. Screwdriver in here. Ah, oh, here it goes. That was easier than I anticipated. Come on, get into place, buddy. There it is. And it's in. Stopped in the store earlier and bought all brand new bolts because I'm an idiot and I can't find any of them. And I mean none. <laughs> all these bolts got lost. So now we got all brand new ones. There it is. Of course, everything is under tension right now, <laughs> which is the reason why it was so hard to get that damn bolt in. It also probably doesn't help, because I can almost guarantee that when I cut the holes in the spring plate, maybe I cut them just a little too small. They're certainly long enough. Well, these are loose and that one's snug. It tells me that one's copping all of the force to support. This can sometimes be a little tricky. There's not a lot of room on the back. Yeah, that's what it was. There just wasn't enough room to be able to get the nut behind the arm and one of the washers at the same time. I'll bet on the bottom it's probably going to be the same way. Although I think it's even closer on the bottom. This one, we shouldn't have any problems getting all the hardware onto place. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my Volkswagen bus, also known as Gregory. Now, you know, I've been working on this rear suspension. I've been trying to get everything narrowed and trying to get it upgraded to a uh, Beatles IRS rear end. And some people have been fighting me what the terminology is. Independent rear suspension. Yes, I know, swing axle is also independent rear suspension. But the IRS, or Independent Rear Suspension, as Volkswagen branded it, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. When it came to America, they called it the IRS. It actually was a double-jointed axle, and they added an extra pivot point and an extra arm to the rear suspension to help keep things straight, so that way they don't have that wacky, wonky camber nonsense. And upgrading it here on this uh, bus, the idea was to keep the bus um, driving better without wheel tucking under and making it less likely to not only slide out of control, but flip over. Nobody wants their bus to flip over. Now, I'm not saying that they all do. Yes, when you're going to die. No, it just means you can't drive it as aggressively as somebody like me drives. <laughs> so that's the reason why we upgraded it. Now, you probably noticed we got the uh, wheel on there covered up. And that's because in this video, if you keep watching, you're going to see the wheel get mounted on there. We're going to do the actual wheel reveal. That's right, coming up in this video. So thanks, you guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. We're going to roll that intro. Don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, and check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks, you guys. Back in a minute. Let's go ahead and put our rear brake carrier on here. Everything should go into place. There's supposed to be a seal behind this. I'm actually out of those seals right now. So again, this is just for test fit, just to make sure everything does go together properly. And actually, I gotta change this axle out too. This is the wrong axle on here. That's looking pretty good. Thing goes over, almost forgot. The spacer's gotta go back in here. This stuff, again, needs more grease on it, but because we're just gonna take it back apart, we're not gonna worry about that today. All right, there it is, we're all set. Now we're gonna put a little eight inch drum over this so we can put 10 inch wheels on it that stick out this far, just like the stupid kids did back in the mid 90s. <laughs> In case you haven't realized it already, yeah, we're not putting a f***ing drum on here. Disc brakes. This is Porsche stuff. Yes, I know. I have the rotor on here from the left-hand side, and I also have the caliper that also belongs on the left-hand side, but I'm just doing this for test fitment. That disc fits right. I took a lot of measurements, and I was hoping that would be the case. And it looks like, uh, 
Looks like we just about nailed it on that. Now we gotta see if the caliper is gonna fit on there. Let me go grab a caliper and we're just gonna see what happens. All right, here's one of our calipers. This caliper has to go in the back. A washer has to go between the mounting surface and the caliper. That's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get my head underneath here without laying on the muddy ground. And uh, yeah, it's been raining. <laughs> it's the first time it's been raining in uh, months. So I'm really not gonna argue with the weather. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I've got the wrong size bolts. No. I think my threads on the uh, brake carrier here are a little, little messed up. Yeah, that seems to be what's wrong. The threads on the top bolt hole up here aren't quite right. I'm gonna go grab my tap real quick. Well, I'm not sure what's going on, but when I put the tap in, it goes right in with uh, minimal resistance, turning it by hand. I mean, it had some resistance, so obviously it was the right size, but I was able to run it all the way in and all the way back out. Maybe it's one of these bolts that's just a little, little mangled here. They are brand new bolts from a local hardware store. Yeah, it's anybody's guess. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> That's it. A little bit of fluid film in the holes. Of course, first putting our disc back on. You know what? I've also got the retaining screws for this to be able to uh, snug the caliper up to. Yeah, let's do that. These screws aren't absolutely necessary, but when they're in, it makes life a whole lot easier because it pulls the disc right up to the hub, all snug, and holds it straight. Yeah, we got a little bit of rubbing on something. We'll have to investigate that. Oh, I know what it is. It's the e-brake shoe on the inside. Not a big deal. That's okay. Okay. Now let's try putting this back on again. And we're going to worry about the lower one last. Let's just get the top one on. This one was the troublemaker. Apparently running the uh, tap into it was a good idea. Even though I really didn't have anything wrong with it, I think there might have just been something sitting in the threads. All right, there it is. Now the moment you guys have all been waiting for. <laughs> this is something I know I've been looking forward to. <laughs> Gregory's wheel reveal. <laughs> all right, right off the bat, I can see that these studs are a bit long on this wheel. And then I'm probably gonna need some type of spacer or something here on the hub to push the wheel back a little bit. You guys are giving me shit for doing this work, but if you look, the caliper sticks out a little further past the hub. So I need a spacer on here that's going to push this back. I recognize the problem and I'm seeing exactly what I have to do. So it needs a spacer just like what's on Eleanor. I don't think I need quite an inch. I might need about a half an inch, but this is one of the reasons why, boom, I pushed that rear suspension back so far. I knew I was going to need something back here that this was going to be pushing me out so much further. And uh, well, I'm glad I took those measurements and I'm glad I narrowed the rear end the way I did, no matter what the naysayers said. So let's throw this wheel on here as best we can, just so you guys get to see it. Here it is in all of its lack of spaced out goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and that wheel is going to have to come out probably about another half of an inch or so to get this to where it needs to be. But that's what I'm going with. This is a setup that I've got. I think this is going to work. Those steel adapter spacers, blah, 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 whatever you want to call them, seem to be pretty good. There's a lot of people that are using them, especially even people on their Porsches that want to um, go with the older style 356 wheels. And when I saw the Porsche guys are using them, that means they're good enough for me. They're not the aluminum ones that have a tendency for the studs to pull out a brake. These are steel. And they don't weigh that much either. So that's what we're going with. And let me show you the icing on the cake. Check this out. Here it comes. 
There's no clips on this wheel currently, so this thing is just kind of propped there, but there it is. That is beautiful. That's not a 14 inch wheel. It's not a 15 inch wheel. That's a 16 inch wheel. I wanted to be able to clear all of those Porsche brake parts that are underneath there, and that was the best way to do it. Uh, it looks to be tucking underneath the fender pretty well, but what I'm gonna do real quickly, and I'm just thinking about this right now, but I'm gonna pull one of the wheel spacers off of Eleanor, which is a one inch, and let's put it on here, and let's just see what happens. All right, here comes the moment of truth. Everything else is just bullshit. Is this tire and wheel combination with the narrowed rear end going to fit underneath the fender? Well, yes, it certainly does. It's not hitting the tire. And from the sidewall of the tire to the level here, straight edge, it's uh, exactly seven eighths of an inch. So I could actually put a wider tire on here if I wanted to. So yeah, the um, entire rear end was narrowed about one and five eighths inch on each side. Um, the Porsche rear brakes and the IRS pushed me out about an inch and a half, plus the one inch spacer. So two and a half inches came out this way, plus the additional width of a 205 tire over a 185 and whatever the offset difference was on the wheel. I don't know, I didn't measure that. But with that said and done, <laughs> everything fits in there just nicely. And if I take the spacer off, I could actually put a different wheel on it, it has a different offset on it, like the ones that are on Eleanor, and that'll fit on here just the same too. So this gave me massive flexibility. Everything on here is just awesome. This works out real nice. The only problem I've got, if I turn this, you see it actually stops. That's because the bolts that go into the adapter here are just a little bit long on the backside, and uh, they're coming through the adapter, and they just need to be ground off. Uh, I think they're sticking out about a quarter of an inch, not much. I'll just cut the tips off of them, put it all back together, and everything's said and done. I think the selection of parts that I made here was definitely the right thing to do. And just, eh, just everything fits, just everything fits. Anyway, we're rocking and rolling with three wheels right now. Um, yeah, three wheels. The fourth wheel, unfortunately, had a, a little bit of a mishap. We're gonna talk about that in a separate video, so head on over to VV the Duck VV, subscribe. We're gonna talk about it this week and let you know what happened. Anyways, we're back. We're wrapping it up for today. I'm talking to you right now from my brand new tripod. That's right, this tripod is about seven feet tall. And for a change, it's making me look a little short. This way you can actually see me and the vehicle behind me before the angle was so low that it was really hard to get a good shot, but now it should work out just fine. Anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. Really, I always appreciate you guys. Leave the comments if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them in the Q&A video over my other YouTube channel. Speaking of the other YouTube channel, check it out, Beauty the Duck VV. We're gonna be talking about what happened to that fourth wheel that's up here on the bus. Um, like I said, there was something happened last week. It's kind of a big deal, but we're hoping that it gets straightened out before the show. I've only got one week. One week away from the show, from the time this is recorded. I'm not sure when you're seeing it, but one week. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a busy week at work, too. I already know it. It's just going to be a damn disaster, and I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to put in the Gregory. But we're going to do the best we can to get as much done as possible before the show. If I have to cut some corners somewhere and not prepare things properly, only to have to tear them all apart again later, we got to do what we got to do. I don't know if I'm going to win a trophy. Maybe I will. We'll see what happens. Anyways, check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Check out DuckShit.net for slash store so you can get some merch. That's right, Duckman Cycles VW Garage merch. Every bit that you support this channel with this type of stuff, or even if you support me through the rum and cola donations, which I'm gonna have one after I'm done with this, I need it. It's hot out here, and this thing has been frustrating me, and with work calling me, it's just driving me crazy. <laughs> Absolutely driving me nuts. Anyways, once again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned, lots more to come. Take care.